You have to imagine a ship so powerful it could bring an entire nation to its knees. For me, the Bismarck was the Death Star. It was a kind of mechanized warfare that hopefully will never exist again. It was this monstrous piece of steel that held together no matter what the British could throw at it. And when it finally sank, it became a legend with the same kind of force in the human imagination that Titanic had. Yo, what's up, homies? This is Saucy Gangster with the Banner video, and today we're going to be doing this new th this <laughs> nuts. We're going to be doing something a little bit different than we usually do. All right, where's the crack video? I say, don't ask. Okay. What we're going to be doing is that we're going to be taking a look at a new thing which I'm hoping to do on the channel, which I know some people won't be happy with, is because they prefer me to do anime crack videos. We're going to be looking at Elder Bismarck. We're going to be building my own Bismarck. The reason. That's why it's because this came out and I just could not resist getting it. <laughs> it's bloody Bismarck, for Christ's sake. What do you expect? Um, so, yeah. I put a poll on YouTube and everyone voted for me to actually do this video series on YouTube. So, you guys voted for it, so don't have a go at me saying oh, I didn't vote for it. Well, you had a choice of voting for it and you turned it down. Right. So, yes. So anyway, this is a recently new thing. A lot of the other YouTubers have already started doing this. There's some guy on YouTube who I looked at, who looks like Mighty Jingles, who's building this Bismarck. I bet when people saw him, like, yeah, he does look a bit like Mighty Jingles, really weirdly. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, so yeah, so I'm following him now. But yeah, uh, but this was a bit different than usual because this ain't going to be focusing. This is going to focus more on the historical factors of the Bismarck rather than the whole building the model because truth be told, I suck at model building. But I couldn't turn this down. It looks easy to build even though it's probably not. And I just, I just wanted to do it. I just wanted to do it. But if you don't know, I'm just going to explain a bit about my love for Bismarck. This is going to be quite a long video, but it's about my love for Bismarck. Uh, it all started with this book right here. Not this exact book, but it started with that book there. This is Dr. Robert Bollard's book, who is now a professor, Dr. Robert Bollard's book on the discovery of the Bismarck. He was the man who found the Bismarck, but he's more famous for finding the wreck of the RMS Titanic. <laughs> Everyone's like, god damn it, obviously. You and your bloody ships. That's why Titanic is number one and Bismarck will always be number two. And that is why Bismarck is number one and everything else from the Second World War will always be inferior to her. Every end of story. Now, <laughs> yep, you are biased as hell. But when I was about three or four, when I was a wee little thing, I found a Titanic book underneath the TV in my home in Manchester. I used to be English. And underneath the Titanic book was the Bismarck book. Not this, the, not this Bismarck book. I do have the original Bismarck book, but it's damaged and I'm not showing that one. So I've got this one, which I got from a charity shop quite recently. And yeah, <laughs> I like, and ever since then I've liked naval history because of Titanic and Bismarck. So blame them for that, <laughs> for creating an abomination. And I hope to be a naval historian or a naval pathologist. That's what I like to call myself, a naval pathologist. What's a pathologist? A pathologist is the one who studies how they basically cut up dead bodies to see how people died. If you can tell, well, there is an actual naval pathologist who studies and thingies, but I study in how ships die. I look how ships die, and everyone's going to say, please don't say this. And I know 100% from all the evidence in this book and in James Cameron's documentary Bismarck was scuttled, not sunk, screw you. Now, anyway, let's go into the build of Bismarck. So I've ordered I've, pre I've ordered this on the line. I've got issue two and three here. I've got an Anton and the Adoro airplane with the hull. I might have pronounced that wrong. I've got my kit here. I've got my cocktail sticks. I've got my glue, airfix glue. I've got my crafting knife. I've got my screw fix pencil for 
product placement. It's all good. Why have I got nail clippers? They are quite good at thin game, at cutting off the sprues, but they're also nuts. They're all, they've also got a file, so that's good. And it's got a little picky thing, so it's all good. But this is what we're going to do, is that we're going to have a look at this real quick and just show you what this is. So this is a 1-200 scale kit of the Bismarck. Now, it, the company is Hatche. They did originally do a 1-200 scale of Bismarck, but it was a wooden one. It wasn't a full metal one, but this is a full metal one, which is remote controlled, fully remote controlled. It's got sound, it's got light, it's got gun moving, it's got everything, you know, and it's got interior models. And this thing is going to be a beast when she's finished. She is, she just is, because, I know, because I can show you the scale. In the first issue, you get part of her decking. And this goes from the stem, the very front of the bow, to the, what are they called? Breakwater. The breakwater on board the ship. We have two break, type of breakwaters. One in the sea and one in the ship, designed to stop water from flowing onto the decks. And this is my 1,000 one scale Bismarck from the Ship's War Collection, if you haven't seen that. And this is how much you get with the first issue. That much of the deck. Very small in comparison to the rest of the ship. But that's what she's going to look like, but bigger. So this thing is going to be huge. It's going to be... I don't know how huge. She's going to be huge. But moving back, she's got lights, she's got everything. Her, her range finders move and everything, and she's just fantastic. And obviously it talks about what's in each issue and to subscribe to the next one, which I've already had. Hopefully I've got everything. I haven't made a model in a while. Last thing I made, model that I made, was an Airfix Tiger 2. And I still haven't bloody completed it. <laughs> but before you ask how much this kit is going to cost, this kit is going to cost roughly around £1,200. For dollars-wise, well, I don't think you can get it in America, but it, she's going to cost around £1,400. Three hundred to four hundred dollars, so it's a lot of money. And I know some people are going to be having fits and panic attacks and being like, "What the hell? You can get a trumpeter kit cheaper." That is correct, and you can actually get the wooden version of this ship, which Hatche previously did cheaper. But the problem is, it's harder to put together, and it's got photo etch and all that. And ooh, no. <laughs> but this one is not only is it actually going step by step, helping you through everything, but this is teaching you the entire history of the ship. It's teaching you naval battles, it's teaching you everything. This is a fully remote control one. This is fully remote control, fully metal, high quality, high detailing. You know, it's probably one of the best 1-200 scale Bismarcks that you could possibly get out there. And so I think it is worth every penny. And not only that, but you're also doing it over a period of two years, which I know some people are going to be like, two years to build one bloody ship. Jesus Christ. Um, I think it might be over two years. But, but... You're doing this over a set period of time, so in theory you're paying part of that, you know. It is quite expensive, but it's worth it in my opinion. I don't care. It's worth it. You know, I'm going to enjoy making this. So yeah, let's look at the issue, what's in the issue. We're just going to briefly talk over the issue. So issue one, what we have, I've previously read the issues, so I know. It talks about what you need. So you need your crafting knife, your thingy, your tweezers, your screwdriver, your this, your that, your that, your that. You got your comb mat, you need your tweezers, you need your screwdriver, you need your glue, you need your knife, and you need your cocktail sticks, what I have. And it talks about, you know, the basic safety. I know about the basics, you know, what you mustn't do, what you must do. You don't twist the bloody sprues. That is one thing you don't do. Cut them off nicely, file them down, and yeah. And it talks about assembling the capstan. Putting the capstan in, the ventilators, I believe these are ventilators. Uh, that's capstan, you, we'll talk about it later. The bollards and the whole piece and that's it. What turned me down from making this is that little piece there, which I'm going to lose because that's how big it is. That's how big it is, which is irritating. And then it talks about, obviously, a bit about modelers, the whole tips for modeling. Jesus Christ, <laughs> all this DT stuff is just coming back to me, design and technology is like, oh, oh. <laughs> all the stuff I had to learn, you know, the hacksaw, the tenon saw, the panel saw, all that, so it has tips, and then it talks about the history of Bismarck, I just love this picture of her, with her next to this sailing boat, and how tiny it is in comparison to her, you know, and the fun thing, fun thing is that we actually have someone on the channel who actually had a relative on Bismarck. 
Um, he's been featured in a previous video. He's in another previous video, which is soon to happen. He's um, being he's Drache, Drache, Dragon, Dragon, Drache, Drache, and he is he actually had a relative who was on board Bismarck. He doesn't know which job he had, but he had a relative on board Bismarck who I think survived the sinking but didn't survive the war or so I'm told, I don't know. And yeah, he's getting this. And then he told me what the company, which country the company is from, which might explain the swastika on the bow, why there isn't one. And that is, that is a French company. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so, which is irritating. So yes, but it's fine, it's fine. But anyway, it talks about obviously the situation and Bismarck setting sailing from Poland to Norway with a sexy Baltic camouflage. And luckily this ship does come with a Baltic stripes, which is great. And it just talks about her setting off to go to Norway. Her captain was Lindemann, man Ernst Lindemann. But her admiral, I prefer her admiral. You either prefer her admiral or a captain. I prefer the admiral to the captain because I think the admiral was correct. The, the captain was wrong. And was Admiral Gunther Luchens. Don't tell the Royal Navy that he's your favourite admiral. They don't take that highly. And don't tell the Royal Navy like I did that your favourite ship is Bismarck because they don't take that highly. But yeah. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start making the model. So, let's get in. Alright, so I've got the thing out of the box. The parts went everywhere. <laughs> and I completely destroyed the box. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove... I'm going to start working on the capstan, which is this part. A winch. It's essentially a winch which enables you... So you can wrap the rope around these two parts and it can pull up whatever... You know, heavy duty lifting, basically. Sort of. Along the deck. That's what a capstan is. Alright, so I've moved the top of the capstan, the capstan drums as it's noted down. I removed the top of those from the sprues. As we can see, we're using the crafting knife. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue them together using my Airfix Humbrol glue. These are this, this is standard Airfix glue that's in most air kit fix kits. There is also the rebel glue, but I prefer the, this glue because it smells nicer. I know that sounds weird, so that's going to be a quote on the bloody Discord, but it smells nicer and I like the smell of Airfix glue. And I'm going to use a cocktail stick to get these bits on here. And I believe they have to be glued all the way through. I'm going to do some pre-fitting to see if they work. Yeah, that, that, that looks... So I think they need to be pushed in all the way. That looks decent. Should work. There's also people in Germany who are doing this on YouTube, and I quite like to watch the German videos to watch people speak in German. I know they say the name, they say, oh, das Deutsche Scheinschiff Bismarck, and they're all there, and they're quite far ahead with their issues in comparison to us. But yeah, over in Britain, the land where we don't like anyone. In fact, I think these can be fit in. No, they're going to have to be glued in. All right. So let's glue these in. So this is a capstan glued together. Looking quite good. The problem that I have, I've encountered the problem with my, super, with my glue is that I think it's a bit too, if you don't notice what that is, that's part of the actual capstan. It melts. So basically the glue is too powerful. It's too strong. So what it's done is that it's melted the plastic and I've... I did this one time because I had a remote control boat and what happened was I went to go and glue in part of it and I was told by dad, oh, it's not going to finger it. I was like, oh, whatever. I know better. I'm an FX model. You know, I know. I know. I made model whatever. Everything. I made model planes, model boats, model cars, trucks, whatever. And I went to glue this thing and this, practic this boat practically half melted. This remote control boat, part of it just caved in on itself because this glue was just way too strong. And that's the problem with the FX glue, so I might have to use something like PVA, something cheaper. Maybe I should go to the range. <laughs> Get some glue there. <laughs> then you'll know who definitely who I've been watching on YouTube. But we're going to continue. It's not that much. It's not that much. It hasn't melted anything that much. It should be fine. It should be fine. Hopefully. It should be fine. So what we need to do now is that we need to glue the capstan head. We need to go onto these little two bits, which get, let me get them. These little two bits here. I knew these would fall out. 
here. Let's get these two bits. Bloody tiny, bloody tiny. I need to get these two bits. I'm gonna pick them up with a tweezer. And glue them together like that. Oh. But yeah, they prefitted and they've done alright with the prefit. You might need a bit of pre-adjustment because you can see the mold lines. You can see the mold lines and how they've thingied, so I might adjust that so that it looks decent-ish, looks better. I might give that a tidy up. I might give that a file. Alright, so that's the capstan head, I believe, the capstan, yes, that's the capstan head glued down onto the little bit. You can see it, excuse me. As you can see, that's glued together quite nicely. This cutting mat's quite. This cutting mat's quite nice. I, I've never got a cutting mat or anything. I use quite, you know, basic stuff. So I use basic toenail clippers, but I use it because of the file. I use all sorts of basic stuff. I don't use anything fancy, pantsy. I use basic stuff. But that's the capstan drums, and that's the capstan head that will be attached in a later issue. So I need to put that to one side so that it doesn't end up getting lost, which I probably it probably will. And what we'll need to do is that we'll need to get the capstan here and put it on the deck here. Should be easy enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that on nice and see if it needs to be glued. Yeah, it needs to be glued. So we're going to put a little dab of glue onto the deck. Hopefully the deck should be harder than the little capstan and it should be easier to glue. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of glue here, a little bit of my glue here tiny bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully... This is harder than it looks by the way guys. In there. Put it in there. Just a bit more glue in that one. Not too much. Right, now put that down. Get the capstan Plop it in, easy, right, need to make sure it's down on the other side, should hopefully be the kicker, it's not going in, alright so what I've done is that I've glued it around the other side so hopefully it should be fine, I was slightly um, <laughs> worried when the capstan didn't look like it fit in right but I think it did because it's at an angle you see, so it's slightly slanting forward, but apparently it's supposed to be like that. As I looked at the images inside the magazine, as we can see, it's slightly slanted forward at the, you know, so it's slightly slanted forward. I don't know if it's a defect or whatever, but yeah. And after this, the capstan, now we've got to take the ventilators off their sprues, which are here, and we've now got to attach them. Yeah, I believe these are ventilators. I believe. I don't know. There's all different C term. You know, there's all different t terminology about this whole naval talk. You know, you call your mate in the navy an apple. It sounds really weird. You call them apples usually. Um, apples or apples. That's what they're called. Because see, so at Sea Cadets we have ex navy there, and it's all different terminology and whole different language really. But yeah, so next up, these things. So let's get them off their sprues. So I finally cut these um, housing off the uh, sprues and I filed them down because they had sprue bits attached to them. It took me about 20 minutes to do this. <laughs> Bloody hell. And so now it's a matter of putting them in. Now they go here. That's where they go. So I'll we'll just simply put this one in here. Ooh, let's see if this one fits. Okay, I'm going to need the tweezers. This is hard to do when you're holding a camcorder. Right. Easy. E Damn it. Stupid Bismarck. Nope. I'm just going to do a technical failure. <laughs> yep. Is that... That needs to be glued in. Let's try it with the other hole. Should be able to pop in. No, they're going to have to be glued in. Right, so they're going to be glued in, so we'll glue them on the underside. There. 
Prefit, how does it look? Looks decent ish. Okay. The ventilators, they're in here. The housing parts here and here are glued in. So that's good. Next up we have is the bollards. No, not the bollard. No, not the bollard. No, not the guy who found the shipwreck. Not that bollard. These bollards. No, the pun. Never, never mind. It's actually ballard, not bollard. Oh, I don't care. But anyway, we're going to put these in. These are used to basically moor alongside. So you put mooring on. So you'll have tons of these bollards and you'll have mooring ropes attached to them. So that the ship can secure. You can also use cleats on smaller vessels to secure, to wrap rope around them, you know. But bollards are what you usually use. And they usually have them along the side of piers. So, yes. Alright, so that's all the bollards put in. Uh, we've got two bollards at the front here. We've got two on the starboard side of the vessel. And we've got, no, that's the port side. It's back to front for me because the deck's facing that way. And we've got two on the starboard side here. Two on the port, two on the starboard. Ventilator here, ventilator here, and the capstan there. Now all we've got to do is just put in the hatches. And these are fancy navy words for the word door. Uh, basically, you get from one place to another between decks. You can get down between decks. You can get into compartments and blah, 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 blah. You know, I think everyone knows what a hatch is. <laughs> so let's get these final two bits on. <sighs> Finally, it only took me about... I started recording that too. It's, yeah, it's only took me about an hour. Uh, to make this, <laughs> bloody hell, uh, to do these little bits. Okay, so this is the first part done. Here are the hatches done. Forward hatch here and the second hatch here. So, yeah. Um, so this has been... Yeah, this has been the first issue. And I got my little capstan. So this has been the first issue. This is all you get. You get the basic... The basic front deck of the ship. And that's really it. Um... So yeah, I think this is going to be a good kit to make. Um, the bollards were quite easy, I just simply put them in and then I glued the undersides, that's what I did. I glued the undersides because I don't think it will affect if I glue the undersides of these, so I've glued them underside in. And <laughs> to think that it takes me an hour to bloody do these little bits on the top, bloody hell. But yeah, um, so this has been it for issue one, this is uh, of Build the Bismarck, um, part of the hull we got decking and we've got a little capstan which I'm gonna to have to keep separate and the next issue we're going to look at the 38 centimeter gun why do they use centimeters you give your gun size in inches not centimeters everyone knows that Bismarck had 15 inch guns not the biggest guns HMS Rodney had bigger guns and obviously Yamato and Iowa yeah, yeah. but in the Europe she was the largest battleship in Europe when she was built and the funny thing was that Hitler was like oh no no it's all uh, Bismarck's only small and turns out Bismarck was like bloody way bigger than <laughs> he told everyone he's like oh yeah it's the size of a Deutschland class pocket battleship it's fine it's nothing big it's nothing big now and it turns out Bismarck was bigger than everyone bloody expected but yeah and obviously it gives about famous marine battles but about old ones, don't like old ones, old ones suck, it's the modern ones that I like. But she had 15 inch guns, and it's going to be the gun Anton, her forward gun, her very forward gun, which I've got issue two, already here, but unfortunately I couldn't do it because it's taken too long, <laughs> so I'm going to have to do it in another day. But yeah, and that's it, we're going to do about the gun, Anton. Uh, great guns that were able to defeat the pride of the Royal Navy, the leadership of the Admiral class battle cruisers, HMS Hood, named after Samuel Hood. And obviously, if you don't understand, Bismarck was named after the Chancellor Otto von Bismarck of Germany. And the captain said, Oh, Bismarck is a he. And I said, I hate you, Captain Lindemann. And that is why Luchens will always be better than Lindemann, in my opinion. Because <laughs> he probably addressed her as a she. All ships are she. Yes, we know. I oh, see. You know. We know what you're like with ships. Yes, you bloody do. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is this has been Build the Bismarck issue one. Next week we're going to go on to issue two, and then we're going to go on to issue three, and then four, five. Until this is done, 
we've already started on this journey, and we're, I'm sure as hell going to finish it. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and as always, peace out, homies.